So we're going to lay out three different categories of Bible reader, the beginner Bible reader, the intermediate Bible reader, and the advanced Bible reader. And a general progression that we're going to explore is reading the Bible devotionally through to reading the Bible devotionally and analytically. And the development is important and we'll unpack that as we get to intermediate and advanced stages. But you're here today because you're just starting out on the idea of Bible reading. And I first want to let you know about a simple strategy. This is a strategy that's used all over the world uh, in English speaking nations. It's the anagram. Is it anagram? Is that how you say it? SOAP. Scripture, observation, application, prayer. SOAP. Now SOAP is something that you can use to establish a pattern of getting riches out of the scripture. Now people often ask, what should I read first? Now all of the Bible is the word of God and it's important that your plan is in the next one to two years to read all of the scripture. But it's easiest to access the scripture as a starting point through the New Testament, mostly because it has a lot more um, content that we're able to relate to and stories concerning Jesus or figures that we know about. And so it's easier to on-ramp, shall we say, in reading the New Testament. But beyond that, um, we'd give a few different qualifications as to what you should read and I'll lay those out for you. But let me first start with this, that the purpose of reading scripture is to get to know God. So don't just read the scripture to get to know the stories or to analyze a particular perspective on theology, but read the scriptures in order to get to know God. And because that's our purpose, quality is always much more significant than quantity. But what our goal is, is to help you cultivate a habit of reading the scripture. And so for a habit to form, we need to set realistic goals. And so the realistic goal that I want to set out in front of you is to first establish that you're going to read a chapter a day for a week. The second goal after this will be to read a chapter a day for a month. Now, if you read a chapter a day for a week, that's good six or seven chapters. That would be pretty well any letter that you can find in the New Testament. So you might want to think of starting with Ephesians or Colossians or Philippians. They are a little bit complicated, but give a chapter at a time to reading one of those letters. When you've done one or two weeks and you've, given, you've achieved a chapter every single day, give yourself a huge pat on the back. Champ celebrate what God has done in your life and the things you've learned. You've started forming a habit. And when you feel confident, go to the next phase, reading the Bible one chapter a day for a month. And in that context, we'd advocate for you to read a gospel. So consider Luke, if you like something a bit more structured and intentional with a, historic, a historian's mind coming through in that space. Read John, if you love to hear both the stories of what Jesus did, but then how we can understand those theologically. But actually any gospel would be good in this context. So start with reading the Bible for a week, maybe two weeks, chapter a day, then graduate to chapter a day for a month. What we're going to do in that context is follow through in this principle, SOAP. So whether you've picked a, a letter or you've picked a gospel, I want you to get hold of your notebook and just write at the top, S-O-A-P, Scripture, Observation, Application, Prayer. Scripture, Observation, Application, Prayer. And so each page of your notebook will have SOAP written all over it. But what you first want to note down is S, what scripture am I reading? So it might be today's chapter is Colossians chapter one. And so you write S, Colossians chapter one. Then you go to O, observation, and you read through that chapter and read through slowly. Take the time, you're aiming for about 20 minutes in this process of reading this chapter. So take your time reading through the chapter and note what jumps off the page at you. Pretty well every time you read the same chapter, you're going to see something different. And that's part of the joy of reading with the Holy Spirit. But take time to note down what things you're seeing. That process of reading the chapter and this first phase observation will take you about 
five to eight minutes, depending on how much time you're spending in each space. Then having done that, I want to ask you to go back again and think, well, what does this mean? What should I do differently today? And then again, begin to write out applications. So what particular things you can engage with through the course of the day. So by the end of your time of Bible reading, you've read a chapter, you've got some notes on what you see, you've got some notes on what you're going to do, round off that time of Bible reading with a prayer. Spend time asking God to give you wisdom if he's called you to be a person that asks for wisdom through today's scripture. Or spend time asking him for the strength to love others if that's what he's been calling you to do. And then you so effectively pray that out. So what we're doing here is cultivating not just a habit of prayer, sorry, a habit of Bible reading where we're coming to the scriptures, but we're also turning it then into application on a daily basis. This is a rich part of learning. It moves things away from just that which we're visually digesting into what we're also living out. So this beginner step, stage one, chapter a day for a week, chapter a day for a month, And once you've got to the end of having read a chapter a day for the whole month, I want you to take yourself out for a celebration meal. You started a habit of Bible reading. You're well on the way to becoming a Bible scholar. Keep going. You're going to see great fruit from this endeavor. God bless you.